Hi everyone, very good afternoon. Uh, please show me a thumbs up in the chat if you can uh, listen to me properly and if I am visible properly. Just show me a thumbs up all of you quickly. Am I audible? Am I visible? I am just waiting for your thumbs up. Great. What a name. Osteosarcoma. Okay. So I have got a thumbs up from all of you that yes, I am audible and visible. So first like coming up to this that so many questions you people have started asking. But before I start answering your questions, I'm sorry. I This session was scheduled for 5th of November. But it completely slipped my mind that 5th of November is a nursing conference and I scheduled this session. So I am taking this session. No, this is not the only session which you are going to have. Uh, before your uh, December exam, I'm going to take at least three to four sessions. In these three to four sessions, at least four sessions, I believe. In these four sessions, I will be uh, covering the most important points which you need to know, the most important topics which you need to know in OBS and Gaini. These important topics, they cannot be a replacement for the entire year jo aapne mehnat kari. Entire year, whatever you've studied in OBS and Gaini, that is more important. This is only a quick revision part. Your concepts which you have built in the entire year, they that is what is going to take you ahead. But I'm just going to brush up the important points with you here. Along with that, you people were always so nervous Ki ma'am, edition 6 of Marrow mein itne updates aa gaye. There are so many updates in edition 6 of Marrow. Are these updates important for nursing, uh, for uh, foreign medical graduate students? So all those updates which I feel are important for you people. During these sessions, I am going to cover them up, right? And yes, this these sessions will be available later on as well. So later on, these sessions will be available to you if you feel that you are going to waste your time just now uh, and you will have to listen to me at a slower speed later on. It's okay. All these sessions will be visible for you. They will be here uh, for you. Now, your next question is, should you watch... Uh, MCQ discussion in Maro, definitely you have to watch the MCQ discussion videos. Whether you are a Maro subscriber or whether you are a Prep Ladder subscriber or any other, um, you know, app subscriber, MCQ discussion videos, jo bhi aapke app mein di hai, they are all very important. Now, just in case you have done, gone through all those MCQ discussions, I want you also to go through the MCQ discussions which are there on YouTube. Maro ke YouTube channel pe jao. In the Maro YouTube channel, click on the playlist. In the playlist, there are uh, separate playlists which have been designed and created for foreign medical students. Vaha pe I have discussed important MCQs for FMG students also. So you are going to watch edition 6 MCQ discussion videos and you are going to watch the dis MCQ discussion videos which are there on YouTube in the Maro playlist. Right? Okay. I will... Uh, how long is this session going? Ma'am, time is less. It's difficult to watch MCQ discussion. Why it is difficult to watch MCQ discussion at this point of time is because you Sara ka Sara explanation sunoge. At this point of time, I don't want you to listen to all uh, the discussion. Agar koi aisa question hai, which you can answer even without looking at the discussion, then uh, please skip the discussion part of that particular MCQ. Only those MCQs where you feel ki nahi mujhe isme samaj hi nahi aa raha tha why the faculty has given the answer like this jabki main koi aur answer soch raha tha. In that case you should watch the explanation video. Right? See, OBS and Gaini bachon for your foreign medical graduate exam is very very important. Whether it is paper 1 or whether it is paper 2, combine karke you are going to get at least 35 questions in OBGY. And in 35 questions ka jo break up hota hai, usme majority of the questions are asked from obstetrics. 
सो सिक्सटी परसेंट क्वेश्चन ऑब से आएंगे राधर सिक्सटी फाइव परसेंट क्वेश्चन ऑब से आएंगे थर्टी फाइव परसेंट क्वेश्चन गायनी से आएंगे सो ऑब्स एंड गायनी इज वन ऑफ द मेजर सब्जेक्ट फॉर योर अपकमिंग एग्जाम एंड यू कैन नॉट अफोर्ड टू निग्लेक्ट दिस सब्जेक्ट राइट एज आई ऑलवेज से इन मेडिसिन आप जितना मर्जी मेडिसिन पढ़ लो 40 क्वेश्चन आएंगे मेडिसिन के आप 30 या 32 टू क्वेश्चन आंसर कर पाओगे बट दैट इज नॉट द केस इन ओबीजीवाई नॉट बिकॉज आई एम टीचिंग यू दिस इज बिकॉज ओबीजीवाई के लिए द टेक्सट बुक्स विच यू आर एक्सपेक्टेड टू रेफर आर दत्ता फॉर ऑब्स एंड शो फॉर गाइनी राइट दे डोंट एक्सपेक्ट कि आप उससे ज्यादा कुछ पढ़ोगे एंड जो भी अपडेट पार्ट है दैट आई एम गोइंग टू कवर फॉर यू सो इन ऑब्स एंड गाइनी आउट ऑफ 30 क्वेश्चन 35 क्वेश्चन इट इज वेरी वेरी इजी फॉर यू टू आंसर 30 क्वेश्चन बड़े आराम से यू विल बी एबल टू आंसर 30 क्वेश्चन सो जस्ट यू नो फोकस ऑन द प्रीवियस कॉन्सेप्ट विच यू हैव बिल्ट एंड फोकस ऑन रिवाइजिंग द इंपॉर्टेंट पॉइंट एंड दोज इंपॉर्टेंट पॉइंट आई एम गोइंग टू मेक यू रिवाइज जस्ट नाउ इन टूडेज सेशन अप्रॉक्सिमेटली वन एंड हाफ टू क्वार्टर टू टू आवर्स का होगा इसी तरीके से आई एम गोइंग टू टेक योर फोर सेशन और आर फाइव सेशन दैट मीन्स इन टोटल टेन टू इलेवन आवर्स आई विल बी रिवाइजिंग इंटायर ओबीजीवाई विद यू राइट ओके so before i go and tell you uh, you know about pih one of the most important topics jo aapko revise karna hai is pih hypertension in pregnancy so let us take up a question over here a 32 year old g1 p0 at 12 weeks of pregnancy comes for routine antenatal visit her bp is 146 by 92 after 15 minutes her bp is 140 by 88 her urine analysis is negative for proteins she is put on anti hypertensive drug and bp comes under control after 22 weeks uh, after 22 weeks on routine examination her bp is 150 by 114 and urine analysis shows plus 2 proteinuria what is the diagnosis so tell me what is your diagnosis in this case so now whenever you are asking me uh, whenever a question is asked to you on hypertension in pregnancy remember hypertension in pregnancy means bp more than equal to 140 by 90 on two occasions four hours apart ek bar ki reading pe aap kabhi bhi patient ko hypertensive nahi bologe you have to take the reading twice and it has there has to be a gap of 4 hours unless and until agar patient ka bp 160 by 110 hai if bp is more than equal to 160 by 110 in that case don't wait for 4 hours in that case repeat her bp in 15 minutes kyunki aise case mein you have to give anti hypertensive right so now a very common confusion which all of you have is suppose agar aapko patient ka bp diya hai 144 by 86 will you call it hypertension in pregnancy yes either systolic has to be raised by more than 140 or diastolic more than 90 either of this right now if your question is saying that the increase in bp is seen before 20 weeks of pregnancy immediately usko mark kar do it is chronic hypertension of pregnancy before 20 weeks pe it has to be chronic hypertension of pregnancy right and if your question says ki increase in bp is seen after 20 weeks of pregnancy there is no proteinuria no signs of end organ damage that means it is gestational hypertension agar proteinuria present hai right proteinuria ka matlab hota hai uh, on urine dipstick if you are getting more than equal to plus 1 please remember this is an update older criteria was more than equal to plus 2 ab naya criteria is more than equal to plus 1 on urine dipstick right or if in 24 hours the excretion of urine uh, the excretion of protein is 0. Point, more than equal to 0.3 grams in other words 300 मिलीग्राम्स, राइट अब इस केस में अगर प्रोटीन उरिया अगर क्वेश्चन में दिया है कि प्रोटीन उरिया प्रेजेंट है तो प्रोटीन उरिया कितना है उससे कोई फर्क नहीं पड़ता हाउ मच इज द प्रोटीन उरिया दैट रियली डजेंट मैटर व्हाट यू हैव टू सी नेक्स्ट इज हाउ मच इज द बीपी इफ बीपी इज मोर देन इक्वल टू वन फोर्टी सो इफ बीपी इज more than equal to 140 by 90 but less than 160 by 
or if signs of end organ damage are absent or signs of impending eclampsia are absent then you are going to say it is a case of mild preeclampsia बट क्वेश्चन में अगर दिया है कि प्रोटीन ओरिया प्रेजेंट है लेकिन बीपी मोर देन इक्वल टू 160 बाय 110 है या क्वेश्चन में दिया है साइंस ऑफ एंड ऑर्गन डैमेज प्रेजेंट है या क्वेश्चन में दिया है कि साइंस ऑफ इंपेंडिंग एक्लैम्शिया प्रेजेंट है देन इट इज अ केस ऑफ सिवियर प्री एक्लैम्शिया राइट नाउ Please understand that in severe preeclampsia, you are going to get any of these things. Either BP is going to be more than equal to 160 by 110, or you are going to get serum creatinine more than equal to 1.1, platelet count less than 1 lakh, liver enzymes raised to two times their normal value, pulmonary edema present, or headache or visual disturbances. Present. These are signs of end organ damage. So, if signs of end organ damage present, hai, ya BP more than equal to 160 by 110, hai, ya signs of impending eclampsia present, hai, you are going to call it as severe preeclampsia. Right? So many times you ask me, ki, ma'am, how are we going to differentiate between gestational hypertension and mild preeclampsia? Gestational hypertension may there won't be any proteinuria and there won't be signs of end organ damage whereas in mild preeclampsia proteinuria will be present right in both the cases increase in bp will be seen after 20 weeks like in in gestational hypertension no proteinuria in mild preeclampsia proteinuria will be present clear to all of you now next thing very important thing is that there are three things which are not a criteria to distinguish between mild and severe preeclampsia mild or severe preeclampsia ko distinguish karne ke liye ye teen cheeze zaruri nahi hai oliguria iugr and amount of proteinuria to oliguria ke basis pe you cannot decide distinguish between mild and severe preeclampsia iugr ke basis pe you cannot distinguish and amount of proteinuria ke basis pe you cannot distinguish right now if your question says that the increase in bp was seen before 20 weeks of pregnancy but suddenly at 20 weeks her bp becomes uncontrollable or suddenly at 20 weeks she develops proteinuria or she develops signs of end organ damage then that means it is a case of chronic hypertension with superimposed preeclampsia right so with this in mind quickly go and read this question is patient ka bp 146 by 92 tha 15 minutes ke baad 140 by 88 hua that means still she is hypertensive and ye hypertension hua 12 weeks of pregnancy mein which means she is a case of chronic hypertension in pregnancy her urine analysis is negative for proteins she is put on anti hypertensive and uska bp under control hai lekin After 22 weeks of pregnancy, जब उसका रूटीन एग्जामिनेशन के लिए आई हर बीपी इज अगेन हाई एंड नाउ शी हैज प्रोटीनोरिया विच मीन्स शी इज अ केस ऑफ क्रॉनिक हाइपरटेंशन विद सुपर इंपोज प्री एक्लैम्शिया क्लियर वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट आर दीज टर्मिनोलॉजीज फॉर यू बहुत क्वेश्चन आते हैं इन टर्मिनोलॉजीज पे नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन in a patient of severe preeclampsia the signs and symptoms which indicate patient will develop eclampsia are in other words what are the signs and symptoms of impending eclampsia please remember eclampsia is always a complication of severe preeclampsia that is why i told you ki agar signs and symptoms of impending eclampsia mil rahe hain so it means you are dealing with severe preeclampsia even without checking her bp you can say that her bp is going to be more than 160 by 110 so now what are the signs and symptoms of impending eclampsia there are three signs and symptoms of impending eclampsia number 1 epigastric pain pain in abdomen hum yaad rakhte hain you have to remember the location it is epigastric pain right plus minus nausea vomiting number 2 headache number 3 visual disturbances these are three signs of impending eclampsia so now 
the options which are given to you are lower abdominal pain lower abdominal pain milta hai impending eclampsia mein nahi bachcho impending eclampsia mein epigastric pain that is what you are going to get you are not going to get lower abdominal pain headache yes visual disturbances yes oliguria no so the correct answer is option d and most of you have written uh, the correct answer that it is option d clear to all of you it's not option c it is option d it's not c lower abdominal pain nahi milta hai epigastric pain milta hai please be very careful your question is saying lower abdominal pain it's not c why is there epigastric pain it is because of stretching of liver capsule राइट सो लिवर कैप्स्यूल की स्ट्रेचिंग की वजह से अपर अपडोमिन में पेन होता है एपिगैस्ट्रिक एरिया में पेन होगा कभी भी लोअर अपडोमिन में यू आर नॉट गोइंग टू गेट पेन राइट इंपेंडिंग एंड एमिनेंट एक्लैम्शिया आर सेम टर्म अभिषेक नाथ दे आर सेम नाउ कभी भी आपको क्वेश्चन आए दैट देर इज अवियर प्री एक्लैम्शिया का पेशेंट who is complaining of dekho aajkal the type of questions which they are asking are next step very oftenly obs and gynae mein next step ke questions milenge so your, if your question is saying ki patient ka bp high hai patient ko epigastric pain ho raha hai ya headache ho raha hai ya visual disturbances ho rahe hain what is the next step this means this is a patient of impending eclampsia and at any point of time she can throw convulsions and that is why your next step will be magnesium sulfate magnesium sulfate is the drug of choice for preventing and treating eclampsia so your next step in a patient of impending eclampsia is magnesium sulfate and antihypertensive now whenever you are getting uh, impending eclampsia this means that she is a case of severe preeclampsia and in a case of severe preeclampsia definitely you have to give antihypertensive the antihypertensive which you are going to give will be either iv labetalol or you are going to give iv hydrolazine or oral nifedipine right and if they ask you what is the best management best management is termination of pregnancy immediately irrespective of gestational age impending eclampsia ke case mein immediate termination of pregnancy karna hota hai iske contrast mein if you get a question that there is a patient who is throwing convulsions eclampsia ki patient hai and they ask you the next step what will be the next step quickly write down in the comment box what will be the next step eclampsia ke patient mein impending eclampsia ke patient mein next step is magnesium sulfate and antihypertensive either iv labetalol or iv hydrolazine or oral nifedipine right but in case of uh, eclampsia if they ask you next step i am waiting for your answer quickly tell me positive vibes you are saying top ashish joshi is saying top labetalol top top okay chodo i'll tell you only two quest students have answered it correctly agar next step pucha jaye in a patient of eclampsia then that is airway management airway management number 1 or either in the options you will be given as airway management or it will be you have to prevent the patient from falling you have to prevent the patient from falling and that is why you are going to raise the bed rail bed rails ko raise karoge so that your patient doesn't fall right okay then i think there is a lag or there is a hang there uh, there is some hang over there just let me check what has happened
now is the lag over can you all see me now is the lag over bachcho okay 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 fine now the other important points which i want you to remember jin pe bahut sare questions aate hain number 1 is pih is a multi organ defect in pih pathophysiology is very important i am not explaining to you the pathophysiology remember in pih there is incomplete trophoblastic invasion एंड ये जो इनकम्प्लीट ट्रोफोब्लास्टिक इन्वेजन होता है ये ट्रोफोब्लास्टिक इन्वेजन जो होता है दैट इज डन बाय एंडोवैस्कुलर साइटोट्रोफोब्लास्ट विच इज अ पार्ट ऑफ एक्स्ट्रा विलिस साइटोट्रोफोब्लास्ट सो ये जो एक्स्ट्रा विलिस साइटोट्रोफोब्लास्ट का एंडोवैस्कुलर साइटोट्रोफोब्लास्ट होता है इट रिप्लेसिस द लाइनिंग ऑफ द स्पाइरल आर्टरीज इन अ पेशेंट ऑफ पी आई एच ये इनकम्प्लीटली रिप्लेस करता है लाइनिंग ऑफ स्पायरल आर्टरीज की राइट right? तो वो डेसिडुआ पार्ट की तो लाइनिंग को रिप्लेस कर देता है लेकिन जो मायोमेट्रियल पार्ट होता है स्पायरल आर्टरीज का उसको रिप्लेस नहीं कर पाता सो आई वॉन्ट ऑल ऑफ यू इफ यू आर नॉट अ मैरो सब्सक्राइबर इफ यू हैव नॉट रेड पैथोजेनिस ऑफ पी आई एच जस्ट रिमेंबर दिस सिंगल लाइन दैट इन केस ऑफ पी आई एच देर इज इनकम्प्लीट ट्रोफोब्लास्टिक इन्वेजन This trophoblastic invasion is done by extra villus cytotrophoblast. Extra villus cytotrophoblast का endovascular part, right? And अगर आप देखोगे over here, this is a spiral artery. Spiral artery का एक decidual segment होता है और एक myometrial segment होता है So in case of uh, PIH, the decid decidual part is replaced. but myometrial part is not replaced so the myometrial part of the spiral artery that is there there is incomplete trophoblastic invasion right the decidual part may trophoblastic invasion is complete it is the myometrial part where it is not complete now question kaise pucha jayega this was a neat pg 2022 question which was based on pathogenesis and fmg and neat ke questions mein there is a lot of overlap so over here the question was a pregnant woman with no other comorbid condition develops preeclampsia she inquires about the cause of her condition the doctor explains that it is due to failure of the invasion of so it is failure of invasion of spiral arteries by extra villus trophoblast this is the answer isme do extra points you are going to remember spiral artery ka kaun sa part myometrial part myometrial part mein failure ho jata hai replacement ka extra villus trophoblast ka kaun sa part hota hai jo ki ye kaam karta hai this is endovascular trophoblast right it is not simply extra villus trophoblast it is endovascular trophoblast which is a part of extra villus trophoblast which cells in the mother help in this uh, trophoblastic invasion it is natural killer cells natural killer cells of the mother play a very very important role in this trophoblastic invasion right so answer over here is option c and this is something which you are going to remember about pih next question which you are going to remember about pih is which is the most common organ affected in pih it is kidney in kidney what is the histopathological feature which you get in patients of pih it is glomerular glomeruloendo endotheliosis a very important point which you have to remember is PIH is more common in primary gravida or multi gravida it is more common in primary gravida females right very very important iske contrast mein jo antepartum hemorrhage hota hai placenta previa and abruptio that is more common in multi gravida females but PIH is more common in primary gravida females then for prognosis of pih 
which doppler are you going to use umbilical artery doppler please remember that doppler pe you can get three questions number 1 in the prognosis of pih which doppler tells you about the prognosis of pih umbilical artery doppler which doppler can predict pih uterine artery doppler which doppler can predict pih uterine artery doppler right in rh negative pregnancies which doppler do you use you use middle cerebral artery doppler right doppler pe these three things you are going to remember to predict pih uterine artery doppler for prognosis of pih umbilical artery doppler in rh negative pregnancy the doppler which you use is middle cerebral artery doppler next important point which you are going to remember is umbilical artery doppler mein i am going to show you all the important images before your exam i'll make it a point that i show you all the important images either i am going to show them to you on what's on youtube or i am going to post them on my instagram handle right umbilical artery doppler mein pih ke patients mein kya milega in umbilical artery doppler in a patient of pih you will get increased sd ratio very very important what are you going to get in a patient of pih in umbilical artery doppler increased sd ratio s ka matlab systole di ka matlab d ka matlab diastole right if sd ratio becomes more than equal to 3 that means termination of pregnancy has to be done at 37 weeks if in umbilical artery doppler now i am going to give you an update please note it down umbilical artery doppler me if you are getting absent end diastolic flow kaisa doppler dikhai dega doppler aisa dikhega सिस्टोल में ब्लड फ्लो हो रहा है डायस्टोल में कोई ब्लड फ्लो नहीं हो रहा राइट इफ दिस डॉपलर इज गिवन टू यू एंड दे आस्क यू वॉट टाइम आर यू गोइंग टू टर्मिनेट प्रेगनेंसी अभी तक वी वर टीचिंग 34 फोर वीक्स नाउ यू हैव टू रिमेंबर द रेंज 33 थ्री टू थर्टी फोर वीक्स राइट इफ यू आर गेटिंग रिवर्स्ड एंड डायस्टोलिक फ्लो रिवर्स्ड एंड डायस्टोलिक फ्लो का डॉपलर कैसे दिखेगा ऐसा दिखेगा ऊपर भी फ्लो दिखेगा नीचे भी फ्लो दिखेगा राइट इफ यू आर गेटिंग रिवर्स्ड एंड डायस्टोलिक फ्लो टिल नाउ वी वर टीचिंग दैट टर्मिनेशन ऑफ प्रेगनेंसी हैज टू बी डन एट 32 टू वीक्स न्यू एडिशन ऑफ विलियम सेज इट हैज टू बी डन बिटवीन थर्टी टू थर्टी टू वीक्स इज दैट क्लियर टू ऑल ऑफ यू येस Uh, i am telling you repeatedly this video is going to be available even after the session ends so not to worry just try to remember what i am telling you ek bar mujhse sun lo listen to me in my voice whatever i am trying to tell you register it in your minds once this session is over copy down all the important points which you feel you will forget right okay so these are important points on doppler important images on doppler ye wali images are available on my instagram handle you can go and check them right now then very very important is management of pih management of pih mein you have to understand ki it can be mild or it can be severe ab Quickly कैसे याद रखोगे नंबर वन पॉइंट कौन से पेशेंट्स को ओपीडी की तरह मैनेज करोगे कौन से पेशेंट्स को एडमिट करोगे इनिशियली यू आर गोइंग टू एडमिट ऑल पेशेंट्स वेदर इट इज माइल्ड प्री एक्लैम्पिया और सिवियर प्री एक्लैम्पिया क्योंकि हमें पेशेंट्स के इन्वेस्टिगेशन कराने हैं एंड हमें फीटल मॉनिटरिंग करनी है तो इनिशियली आई एम गोइंग टू एडमिट इवन माइल्ड प्री एक्लैम्पिया पेशेंट्स एंड वंस आई एम श्योर दैट दे आर माइल्ड प्री एक्लैम्पिया देन आई एम गोइंग टू डिस्चार्ज देम एंड देन आई एम गोइंग टू मैनेज देम एज ओपीडी पेशेंट्स सिवियर पीआईएच के पेशेंट्स को हम एडमिटेड रखते हैं नंबर वन नंबर टू एंटी हाइपरटेंसिव एंटी हाइपरटेंसिव यू हैव टू गिव इन सिवियर पी आई एच इन माइल्ड पी आई एच इट इज नॉट एब्सोल्यूटली नेसेसरी यू मे गिव यू मे नॉट गिव राइट मैग्नीशियम सल्फेट टू प्रिवेंट एक्लैम्शिया एज आई टोल्ड यू एक्लैम्शिया इज अ कॉम्प्लिकेशन ऑफ सिवियर प्री एक्लैम्शिया 
राइट तो इन केस ऑफ सिवियर प्री एक्लैम्शिया यू हैव टू गिव मैग्नीशियम सल्फेट इन केस ऑफ माइल्ड प्री एक्लैम्शिया यू डोंट हैव टू गिव मैग्नीशियम सल्फेट टर्मिनेशन ऑफ प्रेगनेंसी कभी भी पूछा जाए कि पीआईएच के पेशेंट में व्हाट इज द डेफिनेटिव मैनेजमेंट डेफिनेटिव मैनेजमेंट इन अ पेशेंट ऑफ पीआईएच ऑलवेज इज टर्मिनेशन ऑफ प्रेगनेंसी टर्मिनेशन ऑफ प्रेगनेंसी डजेंट मीन अबॉर्शन टर्मिनेशन ऑफ प्रेगनेंसी का मतलब होता है इंडक्शन ऑफ लेबर एंड इंडक्शन ऑफ लेबर हैज टू बी डन इन माइल्ड प्री एक्लैम्शिया पेशेंट्स एट थर्टी सेवन वीक्स इन सिवियर प्री एक्लैम्शिया पेशेंट्स एट थर्टी फोर वीक्स राइट मोड ऑफ डिलीवरी इन बोथ दीज केसेस इज गोइंग टू बी विजाइनल डिलीवरी क्लियर टू ऑल ऑफ यू ओके नाउ इफ अ क्वेश्चन कम ऑल ऑफ द फॉलोइंग आर डन इन पेशेंट्स ऑफ पी आई एच एक्सेप्ट उस एक्सेप्ट में एनी ऑफ दीज थ्री थिंग्स विल बी देयर आउट ऑफ द थ्री थिंग्स विच नाउ आई एम टेलिंग यू यू विल गेट एनी ऑफ दिस इन एक्सेप्ट कभी भी पीआईएच के पेशेंट को हम लो सॉल्ट डाइट एडवाइज नहीं करते दैट इज दैट इज नॉट डन सॉल्ट का कोई रोल नहीं है इन पीआईएच राइट सो यू आर नॉट गोइंग टू से दैट लो सॉल्ट डाइट इज एडवाइज राइट एब्सोल्यूट बेड रेस्ट नहीं एडवाइज करते वी एडवाइज देम रिस्ट्रिक्टेड एक्टिविटी यू हैव टू एडवाइज देम रिस्ट्रिक्टेड एक्टिविटी यू विल नेवर से दैट आई एम गोइंग टू एडवाइज देम to uh, for a complete bed rest third thing aspirin aspirin aap tab advise karte ho jab aapne pih ko prevent karna hai but once your patient develops pih it has no role right so whenever you get a question all of the following are done in a patient of pih except except me out of these three things any will be present राइट याद रखना दीज आर नॉट डन इन पेशेंट्स ऑफ पीआईएच अ वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट अपडेट विच ऑल ऑफ यू हैव टू रिमेंबर वेदर यू आर अ नीट पीजी स्टूडेंट हु इज वाचिंग दिस सेशन वेदर यू आर एफएमजी स्टूडेंट वाचिंग दिस सेशन जित एसीओजी ने रिसेंटली फाइव कैटेगरीज ऑफ पेशेंट्स को कहा है प्रेग्नेंट पेशेंट्स को कहा है कि यू हैव टू गिव देम एस्पिरिन टू प्रिवेंट पीआईएच right and what is this five categories you are going to remember that by the mnemonic all hypertensive mothers can die right a stands for apla syndrome anti phospholipid antibody syndrome and i am expecting one question from here either in neat or in fmg exam h stands for chronic hypertensive patient chronic hypertensive patient mein taaki superimposed preeclampsia na ho in all chronic hypertensive patients you have to put them on aspirin similarly if there is previous history of pih then multi fetal pregnancy twin pregnancies mein you or twin pregnant patients ko you are going to give them aspirin kidney disease hai agar mother ko you are going to give her aspirin diabetic mother hai you are going to give her aspirin how much aspirin are you going to give i don't think so they are going to ask you still you should remember it is low dose aspirin 75 to 150 mg per day ideally you should start aspirin before 12 weeks but you definitely you should start by 16 weeks बेस्ट इज कि 12 वीक्स से बिफोर स्टार्ट कर दो बट डेफिनेटली बाय 16 वीक्स इन ऑल दीज पेशेंट्स यू हैव टू स्टार्ट एस्पिरिन व्हेन आर यू गोइंग टू स्टॉप एस्पिरिन एट 36 वीक्स यू आर गोइंग टू स्टॉप एस्पिरिन क्लियर टू ऑल ऑफ यू ऑल हाइपरटेंसिव मदर्स कैन डाई इन पांच कैटेगरीज में एस्पिरिन देना है बट अगर पेशेंट को एक बार पीआईएच हो गया वंस हर बीपी इज रेज्ड देन यू विल स्टॉप एस्पिरिन right this was to prevent pih not to treat pih clear to all of you right next question very very important question is on anti hypertensives used during pregnancy then uh, which of the following is safest drug to be used for pregnancy induced hypertension quickly tell which of the following is the safest drug to be used for pregnancy induced hypertension now again यहां पे देर इज अ चेंज विच आई वॉन्ट टू टेल यू अभी तक हम पढ़ाते थे द ड्रग ऑफ चॉइस फॉर पी आई एच एंड ड्रग ऑफ चॉइस फॉर क्रॉनिक हाइपर टेंशन रिसेंट एडिशन ऑफ विलियम्स इज गिविंग यू फर्स्ट लाइन ड्रग्स इट इज नॉट सेंग दिस पर्टिकुलर ड्रग इज द ड्रग ऑफ चॉइस 
right so you have to remember that the first line drugs for pih are three labetalol hydrolazine and nifedipine best answer is labetalol right so best answer puchhenge to labetalol but remember the first line drugs used are labetalol hydrolazine and nifedipine not used for hypertension in pregnancy for pih for hypertensive crisis or pih in pregnancy is alpha methyl dopa hypertensive crisis is jab bp becomes more than 160 by 110 and in that case you have to give a drug which is very fast acting methyl dopa is a very slow acting drug that is why in hypertensive crisis we do not give alpha methyl dopa and because सिवियर पी आई एच का मतलब है बीपी मोर देन वन सिक्सटी बाई वन टेन एंड एज आई टोल्ड यू इंटरनेशनल गाइडलाइंस कहती हैं कि आपको हाइपरटेंस एंटी हाइपरटेंसिव यू हैव टू गिव ओनली इफ बीपी इज मोर देन वन सिक्सटी बाई वन टेन सो न्यू एडिशन ऑफ विलियम सेज कि एल्फा मिथाइल डोपा का कोई रोल नहीं है पी आई एच के पेशेंट्स में एल्फा मिथाइल डोपा का रोल है क्रॉनिक हाइपरटेंशन इन प्रेगनेंसी में क्लियर टू ऑल ऑफ यू then similarly the new addition of william says that the first line drugs used for chronic hypertension in pregnancy are alpha methyl dopa labetalol and nifedipine the best answer is alpha methyl dopa and the one which is not used in chronic hypertension is hydrolazine safest antihypertensive is alpha methyl dopa drug of choice for refractory hypertension is sodium nitroprusside and the drugs which are absolutely contraindicated in a pregnant female with high bp is ace inhibitors disoxide and arbs arb stands for angiotensin receptor blocker one very important thing which i want to point out to you is about diuretics please remember two important things pih ke patients mein there is hemoconcentration whereas normally in pregnancy normally in pregnancy there is hemodilution right now because in a patient of pih there is hemoconcentration so that is why diuretics are contraindicated in patient with pih अभी तक आप एक ब्लैंकेट आंसर याद करते थे दैट डायूरेटिक्स आर कॉन्ट्रा इंडिकेटेड इन प्रेग्नेंट फीमेल्स प्लीज रिमेंबर द न्यू अपडेट विच विलियम्स न्यू एडिशन सेज दैट डायूरेटिक्स कैन बी यूज इन क्रॉनिक हाइपरटेंसिव पेशेंट्स दे आर नॉट द फर्स्ट लाइन ड्रग्स बट दे कैन बी यूज एंड दे शुड नॉट बी यूज आफ्टर ट्वेंटी वीक्स after 20 weeks of pregnancy they should not be used clear to all of you yes uh, please provide pdf after the session uh, but actually i am such a technically handicapped person that how to provide a pdf that also i don't know right so if on the telegram group if you can message and tell me how to provide a pdf to make things easier for you i may do that as well okay clear to all of you to anti hypertensives ke bare mein you are going to remember first line drugs and you are going to remember best drugs you are going to remember the drugs which are absolutely contraindicated in pregnancy two things which i want you to remember diuretics are not absolutely contraindicated they can be used in chronic hypertensive patient but they should not be used beyond 20 weeks number one thing number two thing there is a drug which cannot be used after uh, 20 weeks there is one more drug 22 weeks of pregnancy there is one more drug which drug is that which drug can i always tell you that it cannot be used after 22 weeks of pregnancy anyone quickly anyone is going to tell me endomethacin endomethacin is a drug which should not be used beyond 22 weeks of pregnancy because endomethacin leads to premature closure of ductus arteriosus very very important question why shouldn't endomethacin be used beyond 22 weeks of pregnancy endomethacin should not be used beyond 22 weeks of pregnancy because 
it can lead to premature closure of ductus arteriosus clear to all of you okay now coming to management of eclampsia now management of eclampsia abhi tak humne kar liya management of mild preeclampsia pad liya humne management of severe preeclampsia revise kar liya now quickly let us do management of eclampsia as i told you first step in management of eclampsia is airway management or you have to prevent them from falling after you have done this give them antihypertensives because in case of eclampsia bp definitely will be more than 160 by 110 it is a case of hypertensive crisis give them magnesium sulfate to uh, treat the seizures right and the definitive management will be immediate termination of pregnancy so in a patient of eclampsia you have to remember the first step you also have to remember ki hame magnesium sulfate dena hai hame antihypertensive dena hai antihypertensive in tino antihypertensives mein se koi bhi choose kar sakte hain labitalol you have to give iv hydrolazine you have to give iv nifedipine you have to give oral not sublingual right then magnesium sulfate pe they ask you many questions magnesium sulfate all of you know it has to be given by prichard regime that is the regime which we follow here in prichard regime there is a loading dose and there is a maintenance dose jab aap loading dose dete ho you do it without checking renal functions very very important loading dose ke time pe hum kabhi bhi renal function check nahi karte gfr check nahi karte irrespective of her renal function i have to give her loading dose very very important tum log sun lete ho is baat ko lekin register nahi karte ho apne dimag mein this is a question which was asked in ini set also all of the following statements are true about magnesium sulfate except so please remember jab aap magnesium sulfate ki loading dose dete ho you do not check the renal functions irrespective of renal functions you are going to give her the loading dose loading dose mein im dose is 10 grams 50% solution iv dose is 4 grams 20% solution right maintenance dose has to be given after every 4 hours and you have to give it till 24 hours after the last seizure or till 24 hours after delivery whichever is later right and what is the maintenance dose maintenance dose is im you have to give 50% im a uh, 5 grams of 50% im magnesium sulfate in alternate buttocks agar pehli baar mein left buttock mein diya hai to after 4 hours right buttock mein denge difference between loading and maintenance dose is ki maintenance dose ko dene se pehle you are going to check three things you are going to check her urine output which should be 100 ml in 4 hours you are going to check her deep tendon reflexes that is knee jerk it should be present and respiratory rate should be more than equal to 12 breaths per minute then only you are going to give her the maintenance dose right if any of these three things is absent you are not going to give the maintenance dose what are the signs and symptoms of magnesium sulfate toxicity the first sign of magnesium sulfate toxicity is that the knee jerk is lost and knee jerk is lost when magnesium ka concentration is more than 10 milli equivalents per liter what is the therapeutic range of magnesium sulfate it is 4 to 7 milli equivalents per liter and if magnesium becomes more than 10 milli equivalents per liter then knee jerk is lost respiratory depression happens at 12 milli equivalents per liter respiratory paralysis happens at 15 milli equivalents per liter and cardiac arrest hota hai 25 milli equivalents per liter pe इसके अलावा आपको क्या साइंस मिलते हैं मैग्नीशियम सल्फेट टॉक्सिसिटी के बिसाइड्स दिस यू आर गोइंग टू गेट स्लरिंग ऑफ स्पीच राइट एंड यू आर गोइंग टू गेट डायर व्हिच इज एक्सेसिव स्वेटिंग नाउ दिस इज माय रिक्वेस्ट टू ऑल ऑफ यू अभी जो प्रीवियस नीट का एग्जाम हुआ है एंड आई सेट का एग्जाम हुआ or both the recalls are given on youtube there were four questions on pih in neat and there were two questions on pih in ini set so pih is the most important topic for any exam these days you are going to watch those recall videos and immediately you are going to see how many questions you can answer right now uh, another very important thing which you have to remember is the practical aspect these days they are laying a lot of stress on practical aspect they are going to ask you jo ampule available hai magnesium sulfate ka in labor room 
how much magnesium sulfate does it have so the ampule in labor room which is available is a 2 ml ampule and it has 50% magnesium sulfate in other words it has 1 gram magnesium sulfate so if i ask you this means ki one ampule has 1 gram so if i ask you loading dose ke liye how many ampules of magnesium sulfate are you going to pick up so 10 grams chahiye im ke liye so i am going to pick up 10 ampules for im dose 4 grams chahiye iv ke liye so i am going to pick up 4 ampules for iv dose so loading dose ke liye total i need 14 ampules maintenance dose ke liye i need 5 ampules because you have to give maintenance dose as 5 grams clear to all of you the next very important question which was asked in neat 2020 very very important question ki jo maintenance dose hoti hai and jo im dose hoti hai loading mein that is 50% solution and 50% is what is available in your labor rooms lekin iv loading dose is 20% solution how are you going to prepare that 20% solution i don't have time you don't have patience to listen to me ki how do you prepare that 20% solution that i can explain to you so i would want either you watch edition 6 ka video or edition 5 video in uh, of pih in maro and you will understand how this dose is prepared and if you don't have time for that learn what i am telling you you are going to take a 20 ml syringe you are going to add 4 ampules of magnesium sulfate plus 12 ml of normal saline that has gone behind my photo so you cannot see so i'm written it here so 20 ml syringe loge usme 4 ampules daloge magnesium sulfate ke 4 ampules ka matlab hai 8 ml of magnesium sulfate one ampule has 2 ml right so 8 ml magnesium sulfate dalenge 4 ampules dalenge and 12 ml of normal saline dalenge have you understood how to prepare a 20% solution next very important question is what is the mechanism of action of magnesium sulfate magnesium sulfate is a centrally acting drug number 1 number 2 it is anti convulsant number 3 it is not anti hypertensive right so these are the points which you are going to remember about magnesium sulfate if your patient has magnesium sulfate toxicity what are you going to give you are going to give calcium gluconate as the antidote clear to all of you so these are important points which i wanted you to remember on pih any doubts quickly ask me any doubts which you have put it in the comment box or i can also take up a separate doubt session i will come live on instagram uh, at night right and then you can just take out all the doubts and you can ask me this i will inform you on instagram when i am coming live to clear all your doubts dr imran uh, ccb you are talking about ccbs yes magnesium sulfate it blocks calcium channels that is why magnesium sulfate it should be used very carefully with ccbs with ccbs you have to be very very careful when you are using magnesium sulfates uh mishti deep pahunch rahe hain aajkal fmg mein itna hi deep pahunch rahe hain aajkal fmg mein this is not deep at all this is basic what you have to remember about pih right about pih i want you to remember all these points don't miss on any of these points right quickly let us talk about diabetes in pregnancy diabetes in pregnancy may uh, you have to remember that in india we are following the dipsy criteria right so to all pregnant females in the first antenatal visit you are going to give 75 grams of oral glucose which you are going to mix in 300 ml of water remember 300 ml of water mein mix karte hain and we tell the female to finish it in 10 to 15 minutes right fasting is not required very very important point right so according to dipsy criteria what we are going to do at the first antenatal visit you are going to give her 75 grams of glucose you are going to mix it in 300 ml of water and you are going to tell her to drink this in uh rushikesh i told you beta this has to be stopped 
24 hours after delivery or 24 hours after last seizure, whichever is later, right? Okay, come, all doubts about hypertension cleared. Coming to diabetes in pregnancy, up quickly switch over ho jau to diabetes in pregnancy. So, diabetes ko diagnose karne ke liye dipsy criteria. Dipsy criteria mein, India mein hum dipsy criteria follow karte hain, jis mein you have to test for diabetes in pregnancy twice. Once in the first antenatal visit and second time you have to repeat it between 24 to 28 weeks. Jab bhi patient aapke paas aayegi at the first antenatal visit, irrespective of her previous meals, fasting is not needed. So, irrespective of her previous meals, you are going to give her 75 grams of glucose, which you are going to mix in 300 ml of water and you are going to tell her to drink in 10 to 15 minutes. And after 2 hours, you are going to check her blood sugar levels. If her blood sugar levels are more than 140, that means it's a case of gestational diabetes. If her blood sugar levels are more than 200, that means it's a case of overt diabetes. Clear to all of you? Now, if uh, in the first antenatal visit, blood sugar levels are coming normal, right? In that case, you are going to repeat her blood sugar levels. Uh, you are going to repeat this test between 24 to 28 weeks. Now, suppose aapke paas patient first antenatal visit pe 20 weeks pe aati hai. Before 20 weeks, she doesn't come to you at all, right? So, in that case, what are you going to do? In that case, you have to see to it that the minimum time gap between two tests is two weeks. Now, who is asking? Parmeet is asking 22 or 32 weeks. Parmeet, this answer aap khud doge. Please remember, insulin resistance increases throughout pregnancy. So, in pregnancy, pregnancy is a diabetogenic state, jis mein insulin resistance milti hai, and ye insulin resistance badhti jati hai throughout pregnancy. Significant amount of insulin resistance is seen between 24 to 28 weeks. <coughs> Excuse me. That is why hum kya karte hai? First time hum test karte hai at first antenatal visit and second time hum repeat karte hai between 24 to 28 weeks. Next very important question jab hum insulin resistance ke baare mein baat kari rahe hai. So which hormone is responsible for insulin resistance? Mainly it is HPL. It is HPL which is responsible for insulin resistance. Kabhi kabar, <coughs> they give you a question. All of the following hormones can lead to increase insulin resistance in pregnancy except, right? So HPL is the main hormone which leads to insulin resistance. But iske alawa bhi insulin resistance is caused by estrogen, progesterone, cortisol. So you have to remember one, ki HPL is the main one. And number two, you have to remember which hormone does not lead to insulin resistance. So which hormone does not lead to insulin resistance? It is HCG. So, if they give you a question, all of the following hormones lead to insulin resistance except, us except ka answer will be HCG. Clear to all of you? Yes, mainly it is HPL except HCG. Estrogen can also lead to insulin resistance, progesterone can also lead and cortisol can also lead. Right? Now, then suppose if patient is coming to you, for the first time after 24 weeks of pregnancy, then what you are going to do? Then you are going to do the test only once. Now, all of you know that during pregnancy, there is morning sickness. Ek to waise patient ko morning sickness ho rahe ho, par se aap glucose pila rahe ho. So, there will be a few females who are going to vomit, right? After you tell them to drink glucose. In that case, what you have to do? Please remember, if your patient vomits after drinking glucose within 30 minutes, if your patient is vomiting within 30 minutes, you are going to call her next day for the test. But if your patient vomits after 30 minutes, you will continue with the test. Clear to all of you? Yes. Now, for this is the DIPSY criteria for diabetes. For overt diabetes, we also have an international criteria. What is the international criteria? Same criteria jo aap use karte ho apne medicine mein. Fasting blood sugar if it is more than equal to 126. Random blood sugar if it is more than equal to 200. Postprandial blood sugar if it is more than equal to 200. Or HbA1c if it is more than equal to 6.5. 
then you say it is the international criteria for overt diabetes clear to all of you yes okay now once i have diagnosed that my patient has gestational diabetes or my patient has overt diabetes what is it that you are going to use how are you going to manage both these cases so i have written down a number of pointers and you are going to remember it like this ki kaun si cheez kis mein use karte hain so number 1 in case of overt diabetes the increase in blood sugar is seen from day 1 of pregnancy so in case of overt diabetes the increase in blood sugar is seen acha acha dr neeraj choudhary i was saying 22 weeks of pregnancy endometriosis sorry you are right it is 32 weeks yes yes you were talking about in an uh, in my flow i said 22 weeks endometriosis should not be used beyond 32 weeks of pregnancy it's not 22 i'm sorry that was a mistake from my side it is 32 weeks you are right neeraj okay so increase in blood sugar uh in case of overt diabetes is seen from day 1 of pregnancy whereas in case of gestational diabetes it is seen from between 24 to 28 weeks of pregnancy to 24 weeks ke baad increase milta hai blood sugar levels mein right now in because in overt diabetes the increase in blood sugar is from day 1 of pregnancy so congenital malformations are seen in overt diabetes congenital malformations are not seen in gestational diabetes so a bahut commonly confusing question hota hai ki should we do a level 2 scan or a target scan or anomaly scan in a patient of gestational diabetes please remember answer to this question is yes although gestational diabetes ki patients may congenital malformations will not be seen in the baby but because target scan or anomaly scan or tifa is recommended in all pregnant females har pregnant female mein tifa is recommended that is why whether it is overt diabetes or whether it is gestational diabetes you have to do the level 2 scan which is called as tifa which is also called as target scan which is also called as anomaly scan so at what time do you do tifa between 18 to 20 weeks right very very important now uh, fetal echocardiogram fetal echocardiogram you are going to do only in case of overt diabetes because diabetes may the most common system which is involved in congenital malformations is cardiovascular system whereas in case of gestational diabetes there is no need for fetal echo now you are going to say ki ma'am aap bahut detail mein padha rahe ho i am telling you this in details because this is from our national guidelines hamari national guidelines ne recently bahut detail mein bataya hai ki gestational diabetes mein kya karna hai and ओवर डायबिटीज में क्या करना है दैट इज वाई यू शुड नो दीज डिटेल्स आर नेशनल गाइडलाइन स्पेसिफिकली से कि टीफा शुड बी डन इन जेस्टेशनल डायबिटीज इट शुड बी डन इन ओवर्ट डायबिटीज फीटल इको शुड बी डन ओनली इन ओवर्ट डायबिटीज इट शुड नॉट बी डन इन जेस्टेशनल डायबिटीज वाई एम आई डूइंग टीफा इन जेस्टेशनल डायबिटीज बिकॉज टीफा और टारगेट स्कैन जिसको लेवल टू अल्ट्रासाउंड भी कहते हैं इट इज डन इन ऑल प्रेगनेंट फीमेल्स दैट इज वाई आई एम डूइंग इट इन जेस्टेशनल डायबिटीज then just now i told you all hypertensive mothers can die d was for diabetic mothers so i told you diabetic mothers mein aspirin dete hain to prevent pih kaun si diabetic mother ko aspirin denge you are going to give it to a case of overt diabetes gestational diabetes to apne aap mein it is going to be diagnosed by 24 to 28 weeks right so jab wo us gestational diabetes ki diagnosis hi 24 to 28 weeks pe banegi how am i supposed to give the uh, aspirin that is why aspirin is given to overt diabetic mothers weight counseling has to be done in both these category of females diet modification has to be done in both these category of females a very very important point to remember is that in overt diabetes along with diet modification the new name for diet modification is mnt what do you understand by mnt medical nutrition therapy so it's a fancy name for diet modification 
सो इन केस ऑफ ओवर्ट डायबिटीज प्लीज रिमेंबर डाइट मॉडिफिकेशन अलोन नहीं करते इट इज डाइट मॉडिफिकेशन प्लस इंसुलिन विच यू आर गोइंग टू स्टार्ट इन केस ऑफ जेस्टेशनल डायबिटीज यू आर गोइंग टू गिव ओनली डाइट फॉर टू वीक्स एंड इफ मेटाबॉलिक गोल्स आर नॉट मेट यू के नॉट सी द नॉट बिकॉज इट हैज गॉन बिहाइंड माई इमेज सो इफ मेटाबॉलिक गोल्स आर नॉट मेट देन यू आर गोइंग टू गिव इंसुलिन in case of over diabetes the moment the patient uh, says that she is a case of over diabetes as soon as she becomes pregnant you have to put her on insulin right before pregnancy she will be on some oral hypoglycemic drugs but please remember oral hypoglycemic drugs are contraindicated in pregnancy because they can cross the placenta there are only two oral hypoglycemic drugs which can be used during pregnancy and they are इमेटफॉर्मिन एंड ग्लाइब्यूराइड राइट और इनका इंडिकेशन क्या होता है मेटफॉर्मिन एंड ग्लाइब्यूराइड दे आर नेवर गिवन टू प्री जेस्टेशनल डायबिटीज प्री जेस्टेशनल डायबिटीज इज अनादर नेम फॉर ओवर्ट डायबिटीज मेटफॉर्मिन एंड ग्लाइब्यूराइड आर गिवन टू पेशेंट्स विद जेस्टेशनल डायबिटीज हु रिफ्यूज टू टेक इंसुलिन सो अगर पेशेंट रिफ्यूज कर देती है इंसुलिन लेने के लिए देन ओनली यू हैव टू गिव मेटफॉर्मन एंड ग्लाइब्यूराइड एंड दैट टू ओनली टू जेस्टेशनल डायबिटिक पेशेंट्स नॉट टू ओवर्ट डायबिटिक पेशेंट्स नाउ एज आई टोल्ड यू इनिशियली इन जेस्टेशनल डायबिटीज यू आर गोइंग टू पुट योर पेशेंट ऑन डाइट मॉडिफिकेशन एंड यू आर गोइंग टू सी दिस फॉर टू वीक्स टू सी वेदर द मेटाबॉलिक गोल्स आर मेट और नॉट मेटाबॉलिक गोल्स इन डायबिटीज आर वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट यू हैव टू रिमेंबर दैम Metabolic goal is fasting blood sugar levels should be less than 95. 1 RPP should be less than 140. 2 RPP should be less than 120. Uh, average capillary glucose should be less than 100, and HbA1c should be less than 6. Please remember, it is not less than 6.5. It is less than 6. Right? If they ask you what is the drug of choice for diabetes in pregnancy? so drug of choice for diabetes in pregnancy undoubtedly is insulin again hamari national guidelines kehti hai kaun sa insulin use karna hai human premix insulin use karna hai ya mixed starred insulin use karna hai so jo ek vial ya ek syringe hoti hai insulin ki jo ek vial milti hai aapko insulin ki us vial mein how many units of insulin are there 40 international units of insulin are there इंसुलिन वाइल को किस में स्टोर करते हैं फ्रीजर में कि फ्रिज में इट हैज टू बी स्टोर्ड इन फ्रिज नॉट इन फ्रीजर नॉट एट रूम टेम्परेचर ऑल दीज आर गिवन इन योर नेशनल गाइडलाइंस यू हैव टू रिमेंबर देम एक इंसुलिन सिरिंज को हाउ मेनी टाइम्स यू कैन रीयूज यू कैन रीयूज देम रीयूज एन इंसुलिन सिरिंज फॉर फोर्टीन टाइम्स वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट सेम पेशेंट पे same patient can use insulin syringe for 14 times please remember this now suppose you have got a question which says that there is a diabetic patients jiska uh, blood sugar levels are more than 200 what is the next step the moment your question says pregnant female ka blood sugar levels are more than 200 irrespective of the fact ki wo gestational diabetes hai ya wo overt diabetes hai your next step will be start insulin whenever patient's blood glucose levels are more than 200 you have to start insulin irrespective of the fact whether it is gestational diabetes or whether it is overt diabetes another very very important question area is ki diabetes mein termination of pregnancy kab karte hain right a uh, please remember i don't want you to remember any details just this much ki gestational diabetes ko type a diabetes bhi kehte hain right type a diabetes if it is controlled on diet yeah it is controlled on insulin right so type a diabetes which is well controlled on diet is a1 right a1 ko bhi terminate karte hain 39 weeks pe and if it is well controlled on drugs to usko a2 kehte hain dekho a i am just telling you briefly type a ka matlab hai gestational diabetes right isme a1 aata hai a2 aata hai ए वन का मतलब है इट इज कंट्रोल्ड ऑन डाइट वेर एज एट आई डिट इन गेट दैट कुड यू ट्राई अगेन 
A2 means it is controlled on either insulin or any drug. Right? Now, whenever your question is saying diabetes which is well controlled, चाहे वो diet पे controlled हो, चाहे वो insulin पे controlled हो, termination of pregnancy is done at 39 weeks. And diabetes which is not well controlled, termination of pregnancy is done between 37 weeks to 38 weeks plus 6 days. Clear to all of you? So, diabetes, gestational diabetes is type A diabetes. Type A diabetes, if it is controlled on diet, it is A1. Gestational diabetes which is controlled on insulin or drugs is A2. Uh, hardly matters ki A1 hai ya A2 hai. If your question is saying that it is diabetes which is well controlled, right? Whether it is well One controlled moment. on diabetes, whether it is well controlled on drugs, whether it is well controlled on uh, diet, whether it is well controlled on insulin. Termination of pregnancy is done at 39 weeks, right? Diabetes which is not well controlled, the termination of pregnancy is done between 37 to 38 weeks plus 6 days, right? Pre-gestational diabetes is also terminated at 39 weeks. Clear? So, just 39 weeks yaad and 37 weeks to 38 weeks plus 6 days yaad rakhna hai. Well controlled hai, to 39 weeks. Not well controlled hai, to 37 weeks to 38 weeks plus 6 days. Pre-gestational diabetes ya overt diabetes hai, to 39 weeks. Clear? Okay. Now, congenital malformation seen in the fetus in diabetic mothers. As I told you, you and you know that already, it is seen in overt diabetes. It is not seen in gestational diabetes. Most common system which is involved is cardiovascular system followed by central nervous system. Most common congenital anomaly is VSD followed by neural tube defects. If they ask you most common cardiac congenital malformation, again, it is VSD. If they ask you most specific congenital malformation, most specific is sacral agenesis or caudal regression syndrome. This is how an image of caudal regression syndrome or sacral agenesis appears. If they ask you most specific cardiovascular, most specific cardiovascular is transposition of the great arteries, right? Overall, most specific is sacral agenesis. Most specific cardiovascular is TGA. What is the investigation which is done to predict congenital malformation in babies of diabetic mother? HbA1c. What is the investigation of choice to detect congenital malformations? To detect congenital malformations, aap ultrasound karoge. First ultrasound aap jo karoge, wo screening ultrasound hoga. And wo jo screening ultrasound hoga, wo TVS hoga at 12 weeks. And then you are going to do the best one, which is anomaly scan, which is done between 18 to 20 weeks. Clear? So, suppose your question says that there is a female who has come to you with pregnant female with overt diabetes. She is a known case of diabetes. Her HbA1c is 9.5. She has come to you at 11 weeks of pregnancy and she is worried about congenital malformations in her baby. What is the next step? And options may aapke paas TVS bhi diya hua hai and target scan bhi diya hua hai. So what are you going to choose? Please remember that sabse pehle jo aap investigation karoge, jo ultrasound karoge, that will be a TVS. TVS is the screening ultrasound. TVS say aap saari congenital malformations detect nahi kar sakte. But you can pick up neural tube defect. And because patient is coming to you at 11 weeks, hum usko ye nahi kahenge ki ab tum wait karo till 18 to 20 weeks. 18 to 20 weeks pe I am going to do your anomaly scan. No. Your next step is going to be TVS which you are going to do at 12 weeks. And uske baad you are going to do anomaly scan between 18 to 20 weeks. Clear? Now, what are the fetal complications, neonatal complications and maternal complications of diabetes? Very, very important. I am sure all of you know this. Fetal complications may you get fetal hyperglycemia, you get macrosomia. Macrosomia ki definition is important. Macrosomia means weight more than equal to 4 kgs. What is the best ultrasound parameter to detect macrosomia? Abdominal circumference. What is the mode of delivery in macrosomia? Vaginal delivery. 
if weight of the baby is more than equal to 4.5 kgs in a diabetic patient or if it is more than equal to 5 kgs in a non diabetic patient then you have to go for cesarean section so macrosomia ka mode of delivery is not cesarean section only in diabetic patients if weight of the baby is more than equal to 4.5 kgs in a non diabetic patient if weight of the baby is more than equal to 5 kgs then you are going to say that the mode of, then i'm going to do a cesarean section other than this the fetal complications because macrosomia hai so it can lead to shoulder dystocia it can lead to prolonged labor there can be abortions stillbirth and iud so these are all fetal complications which can be seen in neonatal complications you can get because of prematurity you can get respiratory distress syndrome then you can get hypoglycemia hypocalcemia hypomagnesemia hypokalemia hyperviscosity hyperbilirubinemia and polycythemia now maternal complications which you get in diabetes are increased chances of infection increased chances of asymptomatic bacteuria increased chances of pih then big placenta polyhydramnios very very important and because of polyhydramnios they can be pph they can be preterm labor in a patients of diabetes right what complications are not seen so what complication are not seen in babies of diabetic mother very very important anemia and mental retardation so they are going to say all of the following are neonatal complications of diabetes except except me you are going to get anemia and mental retardation any one of these as the answer because in case of the babies of diabetic mother there is polycythemia anemia nahi milta hai kabhi bhi right what complications which are rarely seen in diabetes patients normally aapko diabetic patients mein macrosomia milta hai if they ask you what is the most common fetal complication of diabetes most common fetal complication of diabetes is macrosomia but rarely agar aapke patient diabetic patient hai jiske andar pih hai ya diabetic patient hai jisme vasculopathy hai then you can get iugr and normally you get polyhydramnios in diabetes but rarely you may get oligohydramnios clear to all of you now because in case of uh, diabetes there are increased chances of preterm labor they can ask you which is the best lung maturity test which is the best lung maturity test in in a diabetic mother to know that the lungs of the baby are mature or not to so remember chahe diabetes ho chahe diabetic na ho always the best lung maturity test is phosphatidyl glycerol phosphatidyl glycerol in amniotic fluid phosphatidyl glycerol in amniotic fluid if phosphatidyl glycerol is present in amniotic fluid it means lungs of the baby are mature if phosphatidyl glycerol is absent it means lungs of the baby are not mature very very important question can be on shoulder dystocia shoulder dystocia ka you have to remember the acronym for shoulder dystocia how you have to manage shoulder dystocia it is an emergency condition and these days fmg may they whether it is fmg whether it is neat they are asking you obstetrical emergencies obstetrical emergencies mein amniotic fluid embolism aata hai pph aata hai uterine inversion aata hai shoulder dystocia aata hai all these four you should be thoroughly knowing them you should be well versed with all these four conditions pph uh, amniotic fluid embolism uterine inversion shoulder dystocia cord prolapse five conditions which come in obstetrical emergencies which you have to know right shoulder dystocia ka management mein remember this acronym helper in this sequence you have to manage shoulder dystocia so whenever you have a patient with shoulder dystocia the first h stands for call for help e stands for give episiotomy so you have to give liberal episiotomy right then l stands for legs maneuver the leg maneuver which you are going to do will be mac roberts maneuver mac roberts maneuver me what do you do you hyperflex the thighs of the patient right then p 
P stands for give supra pubic pressure. Now again, यहाँ पे confusion होता है बच्चों को. Question comes that there is a female in whom the head of the baby was delivered and uh, the shoulders are unable to deliver. Uh, episiotomy is given. What is the next step? And next step में वो आपको दो options में confusion होता है. One confusion is between McRoberts maneuver. Another confusion is supra pubic pressure. All of you think कि पहले supra pubic pressure देंगे, बाद में McRoberts करेंगे. Please remember, it is first you have to give do McRoberts maneuver. And अगर McRoberts maneuver से the patient का शोल्डर बेबी के शोल्डर्स डिलीवर नहीं हुए इफ शोल्डर डिस्टोशिया इज नॉट रिलीव्ड देन यू आर गोइंग टू गिव सुपरा प्यूबिक प्रेशर एंड ट्राई मेक रॉबर्ट्स अगेन राइट सो पी स्टैंड्स फॉर सुपरा प्यूबिक प्रेशर प्लीज रिमेंबर फंडल प्रेशर इज कॉन्ट्रा इंडिकेटेड यू आर गोइंग टू गिव सुपरा प्यूबिक प्रेशर बट फंडल प्रेशर इज नो जेबी दिस इज नॉट अ रिकॉर्डेड वीडियो दिस इज अ लाइव वीडियो बट बिकॉज आई एम Uh, you know explaining to you i am speaking to you that is why i am unable to go through your charts in between i am looking at the charts but otherwise i am unable to look at the charts and teach simultaneously so jb this is a live video this is not a recorded video clear then e stands for enter and rotate right where a E is enter and rotate, where you are going to do certain rotational maneuvers. You don't need to know the details. Just know the names of the rotational maneuver. One is Woods Corkscrew maneuver. Other is Rubin II maneuver. Right? So, सबसे पहले कौन सा maneuver करते हैं? सबसे पहले the maneuver which you do is uh, McRoberts maneuver. Then you give supra pubic pressure and again do McRoberts maneuver. and then you enter and rotate you do certain rotational maneuvers like woods corkscrew maneuver and rubin two technique right then r stands for remove the arm forcefully to apna hath andar lekar jao and baby ke hath ko forcefully remove karne ki koshish karo this is called as jack mares maneuver right isse bhi agar shoulder dystocia relieve nahi hua then you ask the patient to come on her all four limbs so your patient is going to lie on her all four limbs and then you are going to try to deliver the shoulder this is called as gaskins maneuver or this is also called as all four maneuver all four maneuver and the last in sabse bhi agar relieve nahi ho raha shoulder dystocia then what you are going to do is you are going to push the head of the baby back into the uterus and you are going to do a cesarean section which is called as zavernelli's maneuver so remember the names of the maneuvers which you do in shoulder dystocia you do mcroberts maneuver you do woods corkscrew maneuver rubin two maneuver jack mears maneuver and gaskins all four maneuver मैनुअर्स या तो शोल्डर डिस्टोशिया में आते हैं या मैनुअर ब्रीच डिलीवरी में आते हैं और एक मैनुअर है विच कम्स इन नॉर्मल डिलीवरी विच इज दैट मैनुअर विच यू डू इन नॉर्मल डिलीवरी विच इज द मैनुअर विच यू डू इन नॉर्मल डिलीवरी द मैनुअर विच यू डू इन नॉर्मल डिलीवरी इज रिटिजन मैनुअर Retrigen maneuver. In retrigen maneuver, with one hand you will support the perineum, and with the other hand, initially you will flex the head of the baby and then extend. That is what is retrigen maneuver. With one hand, suppose support the head, uh, support the perineum. With other hand, initially flex and then extend the head of the baby. That is retrigen maneuver, which is done in normal delivery, right? So. now in dead baby you can also fracture the clavicle of the baby that is you can go for cleidotomy but there is no role of symphyosotomy so these are all the steps which you have to do in shoulder dystocia helper very very important they can ask you what is the most common fetal complication of shoulder dystocia it is urbs palsy ab agar urbs and anatomy ko integrate karna hoga they are going to ask you which nerve roots are involved in urbs palsy it is c5 c6 nerve roots 
which are involved in nerves in herbs palsy what is the most common maternal complication of shoulder dystocia pph pph is the most common maternal complication of shoulder dystocia clear to all of you right now as i told you कि जब भी आपके पास पेशेंट आएगी डायबिटीज की ओवर्ट डायबिटीज की एट 12 वीक्स इनिशियली यू आर गोइंग टू डू अ टीवीएस बिकॉज टीवीएस कैन डिटेक्ट सम ऑफ द अनोमलीज एंड व्हाट आर दो सम ऑफ द अनोमलीज व्हिच अ नॉर्मल अल्ट्रासाउंड कैन डिटेक्ट नॉर्मल रूटीन अल्ट्रासाउंड कैन डिटेक्ट अ नॉर्मल रूटीन अल्ट्रासाउंड कैन डिटेक्ट न्यूरल ट्यूब डिफेक्ट और एन एनसेफली एन एनसेफली की इमेजेस आर वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर यू they ask you a question that anencephaly can be earliest diagnosed by it can earliest be diagnosed by 10 weeks best it can be diagnosed by 12 14 weeks definitely you can diagnose it by 14 weeks earliest you can diagnose it on 10 weeks by ultrasound right what are the signs of anencephaly on ultrasound in anencephaly you get a triangular face which is called as mickey mouse sign and you get big eyes which is called as frog eye sign so excuse me look over here over here this is a triangular face and big eyes which is called as frog eye sign and that is also called as mickey mouse sign you can get a specimen of anencephaly in anencephaly there is cranial vault is absent so the brain tissue is going to herniate out giving you a shower cap sign anencephaly is more common in female fetuses a very important question is what is the recurrence rate of neural tube defect after one baby so if there is one affected child with neural tube defect what is the recurrence rate recurrence rate is 5% in case of anencephaly not only the cranial vault is absent but adrenal gland and pituitary gland are also absent or hypoplastic face is normal in anencephaly and because face is normal in anencephaly that is why the most common presentation in anencephaly is face presentation in case of anencephaly we get polyhydramnios in anencephaly you can either get preterm labor or you can get post term labor why do you get post term labor this is because pituitary gland and adrenal glands are absent and because adrenal gland is absent so dhea sulfate will be absent right so which is that hormone which is synthesized specifically by fetal adrenal glands कौन सा ऐसा हार्मोन होता है विच इज सिंथेसाइज्ड बाय एड्रीनल ग्लैंड स्पेसिफिकली इट इज डीएचई सल्फेट बिकॉज डीएचई सल्फेट विल बी एब्सेंट सो ईस्ट्रोजन विल बी एब्सेंट एंड बिकॉज ईस्ट्रोजन विल बी एब्सेंट इट कैन लीड टू पोस्ट टर्म लेबर Why can you get preterm labor in anencephaly? Because of polyhydramnios. In dono me se jada common kya hota hai in anencephaly? Post term labor ki preterm labor, post term labor, right? In all patients of anencephaly, alpha fetal protein levels are increased, right? Then so this is an ultrasound for anencephaly. Please remember, make you know this is one of the very important images which you have to remember. the other thing which you have the other very important ultrasound which you have to remember is ultrasound of spina bifida in spina bifida you get two signs number one is a banana sign which is downward displacement of the cerebellum so downward elongation or downward displacement of the cerebellum i'm just erasing it so that you can see it again so i'm erasing so that you can see that there is downward displacement of the cerebellum and this over here is what is called as frontal bossing which is lemon sign so lemon sign and banana sign are seen in case of spina bifida another very important theoretical question is in which conditions are alpha fetoprotein raised ab alpha fetoprotein levels are raised in many conditions and it is very difficult to remember all these conditions that is why i want you to remember the conditions where alpha fetoprotein levels are decreased to kabhi bhi agar question aayega all of the following are conditions in which alpha fetoprotein levels are high except except me you are going to get any of these conditions 
डायबिटिक गोट डायबिटीज स्टैंड फॉर डायबिटिक मदर G for gestational trophoblastic disease, O for obesity, A for abortion, T for trisomy. Right? So in diabetic mothers, the levels of in diabetic goat, this is the mnemonic diabetic goat, where diabetic stands for diabetic mothers. G for gestational trophoblastic diseases, O for obesity, A for abortion, T for trisomy. So in these conditions, alpha fetoprotein levels are decreased. In rest, all of the conditions which you are going to get, in many conditions, levels of alpha fetoprotein are raised. They may ask you, what is the most specific biochemical marker for neural tube defect? Please do not answer it as alpha fetoprotein. It is acetylcholine esterase, right? That is the most specific biochemical marker for neural tube defects. Clear to all of you? Yes. Some of you have written over here signs for IUD. So let us quickly revise what are the signs for IUD which you get on X-ray or on ultrasound. So number one sign which you get, the first sign which you get is Robert sign. What is Robert sign? That is presence of gas in great vessels. So when gas is present in great vessels, that is Robert sign. Number two, you can get spalding sign. I didn't get sign. that. Could you try again? So number two is spalding sign, and number three, which you get is a ball sign. Ball sign. So these are the signs which you get in case of IUD. In which condition do you get halo sign or Buddha sign? When do you get halo sign or Buddha sign? Halo sign or Buddha sign? you get in case of hydrops fetalis. In hydrops fetalis, you are going to get Buddha sign or you are going to get halo sign. Clear? So these are all the signs, very important signs which you have to remember. I will tell you signs of early pregnancy also just now. But remember these signs which I have told you till now. Okay. Now to prevent neural tube defects, what you can give to prevent neural tube defects, you have to give folic acid supplementation and how much folic acid you have to give 400 micrograms of folic acid, which you have to give one month before a patient conceives and you have to continue it for three months after conception. This is to prevent neural tube defect, right? So this has to be given to all pregnant females. Now, to prevent recurrence of neural tube defect, read your question very, very carefully. If they are asking you to prevent recurrence of neural tube defect, then you have to give 4 milligrams per day. Recurrence ka matlab hai, you are going to give it to those pregnant females who have previous history of neural tube defect in their babies. Right. So then the dose becomes four milligrams per day, which you have to start whenever patient comes to you prenatally or three months before pregnancy. As I tell you in my class, we are obstetricians. We are not astrologers. So we can't say that patient ko ye nahi sakte ki aaj se mahine baad you are going to become pregnant. Right. So a better answer to this question is that whenever a patient comes to you prenatally, uh, whenever she is saying that she wants to conceive and she has previous history of neural tube defect in the baby, you start 4 milligrams per day. And again, you are going to continue it for 3 months after delivery. Right? Now, to treat folic acid deficiency, how much do you have to give? You have to give 1000 micrograms per day. To treat folic acid deficiency, the dose of folic acid. In diabetic patients who are pregnant, what is the dose of folic acid which you have to give? 400 micrograms per day. Again, this is very confusing. All of you think that because in diabetic patients, there are increased chances of neural tube defect in the babies in overt diabetes. So we should give 4 milligrams. No, you have to give 400 micrograms. In patients on anti-epileptic drugs, you have to give 4 milligrams per day. And to treat sickle cell anemia, you have to give 5 milligrams per day. Uh, 1000 micrograms is 1 milligrams bitter. So to treat folic acid deficiency, you have to give 1 milligram per day. Clear to all of you? Yes? Okay. Now, this was very important dose of folic acid. Then very important is Anemia Mukt Bharat program for all of you. Anemia Mukt Bharat program ke liye, the interventions which are used are six interventions which have been suggested by Anemia Mukt Bharat program. Number one is iron folic acid pill. Number two, deworming. Number three, digital hemoglobinometer. 
digital hemoglobinometer number 4 delayed cord clamping so delayed cord clamping is to prevent anemia in neonates right and that is why it is included in anemia mukt bharat program then food fortification and addressing other causes these are six interventions which come under anemia mukt bharat program the iron folic acid pill which you have to give to a pregnant female is 60 mg of iron uh, red pill it is a red pill which contains 60 mg of iron and 500 micrograms of folic acid this is the same dose which you have to give to a non pregnant female also to a non pregnant female you are going to give one pill per week right so jab bhi hamare paas ek non pregnant female aayegi i am going to give one red pill this red pill contains 60 mg of iron and 500 micrograms of folic acid i am going to give her one pill per week and jab ye female is going to think about conception right then i am going to tell her whenever she is planning pregnancy i am going to tell her to stop taking the iron folic acid pill and i am going to tell her ki ab you have to take only folic acid and you have to take folic acid till 3 months after conception right then from fourth month you have to again put her on iron folic acid pill so when she plans to conceive tell her to stop taking iron folic acid now she has to take only folic acid whenever a female is planning to conceive right and this folic acid kitna dose dena hai folic acid ka you know the dose of folic acid which has to be given to prevent neural tube defect is 400 micrograms so you are going to give her 400 micrograms till 3 months of pregnancy from fourth month again you are going to put her on iron folic acid tablet this iron folic acid tablet is a red color tablet and it has 60 mg of iron and 500 micrograms of folic acid kitne din tak deni hai it has to be given for 180 days during pregnancy and for 180 days after that right as i was telling you you have to do deworming deworming hame pregnant females mein bhi karni hai non pregnant females mein bhi karni hai pregnant females mein deworming karni hai by giving albendazole in second trimester how much albendazole 400 mg of albendazole in second trimester non pregnant females may be 400 mg dete hain albendazole ka for deworming and you have to give it twice a year pregnant females mein in second trimester and in non pregnant females twice a year albendazole 400 mg now as far as young boys and girls are concerned pubertal girls are concerned dose same rehti hai iron folic acid ki but the color of the pill is blue pill right so so many times you people think that pregnant females maybe you have to give a blue pill no in pregnant females and in reproductive age non pregnant females you have to give red pill this red pill ka composition is very very important right clear to all of you albendazole ki dose yaad rahegi yahi yaad rahega ki anemia mukt bharat program mein it is not only iron folic acid pill you have to give iron folic acid pill plus in second trimester you have to do deworming and these are six things which come in anemia mukt bharat program these are the six interventions right if they ask you what is the most common anemia in pregnancy most common anemia in pregnancy is physiological anemia what is the difference between physiological anemia and pathological anemia in physiological anemia hemoglobin will always be more than 11 grams per dl so suppose you have two patients jo pregnant hui two females jo pregnant hui dono ka hemoglobin 12.6 tha after they become pregnant फर्स्ट फीमेल जो मिसेस ए थी उसका हीमोग्लोबिन हो जाता है 11.6 पॉइंट सिक्स एंड जो मिसेस बी थी उसका हीमोग्लोबिन हो जाता है 10.6 पॉइंट सिक्स सो मिसेज ए का हीमोग्लोबिन बिकॉज इट इज फॉलोइंग फ्रॉम ट्वेल्व पॉइंट सिक्स टू इलेवन पॉइंट सिक्स डेफिनेटली शी हैज अनिमिया बट हर अनिमिया विल बी कॉल्ड एज फिजियोलॉजिकल अनिमिया बिकॉज हीमोग्लोबिन इज मोर देन इलेवन राइट एंड वाई डू यू गेट फिजियोलॉजिकल अनिमिया यू गेट फिजियोलॉजिकल अनिमिया बिकॉज ऑफ हीमो डायल्यूशन as i told you in pregnancy there is hemodilution right so because of hemodilution you are getting this anemia right now mrs b ka hemoglobin is becoming 10.6 
so because it is becoming 10.6 you will call it as pathological anemia so in pathological anemia hemoglobin becomes less than 11 less than equal to 11 it is pathological anemia right physiological anemia will always be normocytic normochromic anemia and the level of hemoglobin will be more than 11 if they ask you what is the most common pathological anemia which you get in pregnancy it is iron deficiency anemia and it is a microcytic hypochromic anemia how do you define anemia in pregnancy it is hemoglobin less than equal to 11 grams per dl severe anemia means hemoglobin less than 7 very severe uh, anemia means hemoglobin less than 4 what is the most sensitive marker for iron deficiency anemia serum ferritin levels most sensitive rbc index mchc right how do you manage anemia in pregnancy very very important flow chart this is a very important flow chart how to manage anemia in pregnancy so to manage anemia in pregnancy you differentiate divide anemia into two condition into two parts uh, mild to moderate anemia and severe anemia severe anemia you know hemoglobin less than 7 is severe anemia so anything which is more than 7 is put in mild to moderate anemia anything any uh, patient whose hemoglobin is less than 7 is put under severe anemia ab mild to moderate anemia ka management kaise karoge you are going to check the gestational age of the patient if gestational age is less than 34 weeks you are going to give oral iron how much oral iron two tablets jo red pill thi uski two tablets per day doge and you are going to check her hemoglobin after 3 weeks or after 1 month why after 3 weeks because increase in hemoglobin is seen after 3 weeks of giving oral iron right so agar aaj humne oral iron start kiya to uske 3 weeks ke baad i am going to check her hemoglobin and if gestational age is more than 34 weeks and she has mild to moderate anemia that means he her hemoglobin is more than equal to 7 in that case i am going to give her parenteral iron or if your patient is not compliant she is not taking oral iron then i give parenteral iron please remember that the rate of increase of hemoglobin after giving oral iron and after giving parenteral iron is same whether you give oral iron or whether you give parenteral iron rate of increase of hemoglobin is same hemoglobin ka increase milta hai after 3 weeks and kitna milta hai hemoglobin ka increase 0.7 to 1 gram per dl per week right the first parameter to increase first parameter to increase after giving oral iron is reticulocyte count reticulocyte count ka increase milta hai in 1 week after one week of giving oral iron reticulocyte count is going to increase right so this is how you are going to treat a mild to moderate anemia less than 34 weeks hai to do tablets oral iron ki do and once her hemoglobin becomes once her hemoglobin is 11 grams per dl then shift to one tablet per day and kab tak doge one tablet per day throughout pregnancy and for 180 days after delivery why for 180 days after delivery this 180 days after delivery is to replenish the iron stores राइट सो यही चीज अनिमिया मुक्त भारत प्रोग्राम कहता है अनिमिया मुक्त भारत प्रोग्राम कहता है कि वन टैबलेट पर डे देनी है राइट इन ऑल दो फीमेल्स जिनको अनिमिया नहीं है टू प्रिवेंट अनिमिया राइट जिनका हीमोग्लोबिन मोर देन इलेवन है टू प्रिवेंट अनिमिया यू हैव टू गिव वन टैबलेट पर डे फ्रॉम फोर्थ मंथ फॉर वन एटी डेज ड्यूरिंग प्रेगनेंसी एंड फॉर वन एटी डेज आफ्टर डिलीवरी सो अगर आपके पेशेंट का को अनिमिया था एंड यू आर गिविंग टू टैबलेट्स द मोमेंट हर हिमोग्लोबिन बिकम्स इलेवन यू शिफ्ट हर टू वन टैबलेट पर डे कंटिन्यूएट फॉर थ्रू आउट प्रेगनेंसी एंड फॉर वन एटी डेज आफ्टर दैट राइट नाउ इफ योर पेशेंट हैज सिवियर अनिमिया क्वेश्चन में सिवियर अनिमिया आया दैट मीन्स हिमोग्लोबिन लेस देन सेवन देन चेक whether hemoglobin is less than 5 or it is more than 5 if hemoglobin is less than 5 your next step is blood transfusion at any gestational age right if hemoglobin is between 5 to 
in that case look at the gestational age if gestational age is more than 34 weeks blood transfusion gestational age less than 34 weeks parenteral iron very very important question very very important question right now whenever you are giving parenteral iron jab bhi aap parenteral iron doge till 3 weeks after giving parenteral iron do not give oral iron till 3 weeks do not give oral iron after giving parenteral iron right now if your question is saying patient has thalassemia if your question is saying patient has heart failure if your question is saying patient ke vitals unstable hai if your question is saying hemoglobin is less than 5 grams in any trimester whether it is first trimester second trimester or third trimester or if your question is saying hemoglobin is between 5 to 6.9 beyond 34 weeks in sari conditions may you have to give blood transfusion the moment your question says patient has anemia and heart failure or anemia with unstable vitals an unstable vitals ka matlab hai or an anemia is because of blood loss right so an if question says hemoglobin less than 5 then for in any trimester or hemoglobin between 5 to 6.9 at more than equal to 34 weeks that means you have to give a blood transfusion as the next step clear to all of you yes okay now antenatal advice pe i'm just going to do antenatal advice with you and then we are going to take up rest in the next session now what are the vaccines which have to be given to a pregnant female the vaccines which have to be given to a pregnant female are tb vaccine that is tetanus and diphtheria vaccine which has to be given in the first antenatal visit and then after 4 weeks if she has received complete tb vaccination in the past 3 years in in past 3 years any time she had received complete tb vaccination then only a booster dose is needed flu vaccine ka ek shot dete hain in pregnancy if covid 19 vaccination was not taken before pregnancy then during pregnancy she is going to take covid 19 vaccine t dap vaccine in many countries they give t dap vaccine where p stands for pertussis that is given between 27 to 36 weeks as a single shot which vaccines are safe in pregnancy all dead vaccines are safe in pregnancy hepatitis a b rabies meningococcus pneumococcus these are safe in pregnancy which vaccines can be given if a pregnant female is traveling to endemic area yellow fever vaccine typhoid cholera and polio vaccines these are vaccines which can be given if a pregnant female is traveling to an endemic area which vaccines are absolutely contraindicated live vaccines like bcg smallpox chickenpox mmr mumps measles rubella vaccine and hpv vaccine please remember hpv vaccines are contraindicated in pregnancy is sexual activity contraindicated in pregnancy no normally it is not contraindicated if your patient has history of threatened abortion placenta previa or preterm labor then it is contraindicated air travel is contraindicated after 36 weeks so these are important antenatal advices over here i am giving you a government of india's list of high risk pregnancy and warning signs very recently government of india released when i was uh, doing a recording for edition 6 government of india had released a uh, high risk pregnancy list and they had released warning sign list this please copy over here i want all of you to note that severe anemia comes in high risk pregnancy not any kind of anemia then gestational diabetes is coming in high risk pregnancy hypothyroidism is coming in high risk pregnancy not hyperthyroidism right warning signs and symptoms please note down all these warning signs and symptoms make a chart in your 20th notebook and just note these downs and exam se pehle is list ko zarur se revise karke jaoge right quickly some points related to obs psm integration the uh, expected weight gain or the recommended weight gain during pregnancy is 11 to 12.5 kg additional calories which are needed in pregnancy are 350 kilo calories per day this is what your park says and park ye bhi kehta hai ki sedentary female ko sedentary non female uh, non pregnant female ko how many calories are needed 1660 kilo calories are needed 
So 1660 plus 350 is the additional caloric requirement during pregnancy. But Park never tells you कि first trimester में कितनी additional है, second trimester में कितनी additional है, and third trimester में कितनी additional है. Which Williams tells you and you have to remember that also. First trimester में no additional calories are needed. Second trimester में additional 340 किलो calories are needed. Third trimester में additional 450 किलो calories are needed. The amount of water which is retained in pregnancy is 6.5 liters. So there is so there is water retention, there is sodium retention and potassium retention during pregnancy. But because the amount of water retained in pregnancy is much more than sodium and water, that is why the concentration of sodium and potassium decreases during pregnancy. So there is sodium retention, potassium retention, and water retention during pregnancy, but concentration of sodium and potassium decreases during pregnancy. BMR increases in pregnancy, especially in third trimester. Total amount of iron needed in pregnancy, बहुत बार पूछा गया है नहीं और exams, it is 1000 milligrams. Amount of iron which is needed by fetus in pregnancy is 300 milligrams. Total daily requirement of iron in pregnancy is 4 to 6 milligrams per day. Daily requirement of calcium in pregnancy is 1000 milligrams per day, and this should be supplemented to all females. Daily iodine requirement is 250 micrograms per day. Daily protein requirement in a non-pregnant female park कहता है कि non-pregnant female requires 41 milli 41 grams per day of protein. In first trimester, no additional protein is required. In second trimester, additional 10 grams of protein is required. In third trimester, additional 20 grams of protein is required. Williams कहता है and this is very high. हम नहीं follow करते India में बट यू जस्ट हैव टू रिमेंबर कि कभी 71 का फिगर दिखे तो वो 71 वन ग्राम ऑफ प्रोटीन इज द रिक्वायरमेंट ऑफ प्रोटीन जो विलियम्स बताता है इन प्रेगनेंसी एक्सक्यूज भी आई वॉन्ट ऑल ऑफ यू टू रिमेंबर वॉट पार्क इज सेम कि इन अ नॉन प्रेगनेंट फीमेल इट इज फोर्टी वन ग्राम ऑफ प्रोटीन पर डे फर्स्ट ट्राइमेस्टर में नो एडिशनल रिक्वायरमेंट सेकेंड ट्राइमेस्टर में एडिशनल टेन ग्राम थर्ड ट्राइमेस्टर में एडिशनल ट्वेंटी ग्राम बट रिमेंबर दिस फिगर सेवेंटी वन ग्राम ऑल्सो राइट नाउ टेस्ट विच आर टू बी डन इन फर्स्ट एंटीनेटल विजिट इन फर्स्ट एंटीनेटल विजिट एबीओ आर एच हिमोग्लोबिन देन टेस्टिंग फॉर सिफिलिस एच आई वी एच आई वी में देर इज ऑप्ट आउट अप्रोच then hbsag rubella susceptibility screening screening for diabetes using dipsy urine routine microscopy these are the tests which you do in first antenatal visit very very important right as far as aneuploidy screening and tsh are concerned these are optional tests if patient can afford tab karenge if patient cannot afford then you can leave them out torch testing is not done at what time do you do test for gbs so gbs group b streptococci ki screening kab karte hain in all pregnant females group b streptococci ki screening karte hain between 35 to 37 weeks by recto vaginal swab now suppose aapne rubella ke liye test kiya and rubella igg positive aaya rubella igg agar positive aaya that means pregnant female is immune to rubella infection but agar rubella igg negative aaya it means pregnant female is susceptible to rubella infection but am i going to give rubella vaccine during pregnancy no rubella vaccine is a live vaccine you are not going to give rubella vaccine during pregnancy how much is the minimum time gap which is needed Between giving rubella vaccine and between pregnancy, minimum time gap जो होना चाहिए that is one month. Some of you still remember the old answer of three months. Please remember minimum time gap. अच्छा प्रियंका is asking calcium in lactating females. Calcium in lactating females is 1200 mg, right? In pregnancy it is 1000 mg. In lactating female 1200 mg. Okay, so I am coming back to rubella vaccination. रुबेला वैक्सीनेशन के बाद मिनिमम टाइम गैप जो प्रेगनेंसी में होना चाहिए दैट इज वन मंथ सपोज योर क्वेश्चन से इज दैट देर इज अ फीमेल हु टुक रुबेला वैक्सीनेशन एंड इन द सेम मंथ शी बिकेम प्रेगनेंट 
what is the next step are you going to advise her mtp no you are not going to advise her mtp she can continue her pregnancy it is not recommended that she should conceive but by chance if she has conceived she will continue her pregnancy aneuploidy screening ke bare mein kuch important points which you have to remember in first trimester aneuploidy screening can be done by ultrasound or it can be done by biochemical test ultrasound mein you are going to check for nuchal translucency if nuchal translucency is more than equal to 3 mm right and they ask you what is the next step next step will be karyotyping or fish because if nuchal translucency is more than equal to 3 mm there are increased chances of down syndrome or aneuploidy in the fetus and it could be that the baby has some congenital heart problem सो इसीलिए जब भी न्यूक्लियर ट्रांसलुसेंसी इज मोर देन इक्वल टू थ्री मिलीमीटर्स यू हैव टू डू कैरियो टाइपिंग ऑल्सो एंड यू हैव टू डू फीटल इको ऑल्सो द सेकेंड टेस्ट विच यू कैन डू इज बायोकेमिकल टेस्ट इन विच यू आर गोइंग टू चेक फॉर पी ए पी पी ए एंड एच सी जी पी ए पी पी ए लेवल्स आर डिक्रीज इन अ पेशेंट ऑफ डाउन सिंड्रोम एच सी जी लेवल्स आर इंक्रीज इन अ पेशेंट ऑफ डाउन सिंड्रोम प्लीज रिमेंबर एच फॉर एच सी जी एच फॉर हाई सो इन अ पेशेंट ऑफ डाउन सिंड्रोम एच सी जी लेवल्स आर हाई दिस इज हाउ यू डू स्क्रीनिंग इन फर्स्ट ट्राइमेस्टर फॉर स्क्रीनिंग इन सेकेंड ट्राइमेस्टर अगेन यू कैन गो फॉर अल्ट्रासाउंड ऑन अल्ट्रासाउंड यू कैन चेक द सॉफ्ट इश्यू मार्कर्स and you can do the triple test triple test mein there are three things which you check alpha fetoprotein ke levels hcg ke levels and unconjugated e3 ke levels e3 is estriol so in your options it can be written as estriol please remember alpha fetoprotein levels are decreased e3 is decreased hcg is high as i told you h for hcg h for high so alpha fetoprotein levels will be decreased and conjugated e3 will be decreased but hcg levels will be high in a down syndrome patient when you do triple test isi mein agar hum ek aur marker add kar de inhibin a you cannot see the a there i am putting the a here inhibin a agar add kar de that becomes quadruple test please remember i for inhibin i for increased so levels of inhibin are increased in a patient of down syndrome what is the diagnostic test diagnostic test is karyotyping diagnostic test is karyotyping karyotyping ke liye material kaise laoge fetal tissue kaise obtain karoge you cannot see there please write in first trimester you are going to obtain it by chorionic villi sampling in second trimester by amniocentesis so fetal tissue aayega by chorionic villi sampling in first trimester and by amniocentesis in second trimester please remember cell free fetal dna is not a diagnostic test it is a secondary screening test if they ask you which is the most sensitive screening test in down syndrome it is cell free fetal dna cell free fetal dna has 99% sensitivity and it can be done any time after 10 weeks of pregnancy but this is not a diagnostic test it is not a diagnostic test agar cell free fetal dna positive aata hai again the next step is karyotyping right now suppose if your question comes that there is a pregnant female who has previous history of down syndrome baby and she has come to you at 11 weeks what is the next step jab bhi patient mein previous history of down syndrome hota hai directly you have to do diagnostic test diagnostic test directly karna padta hai right so you have to do the diagnostic test directly and 11 weeks pe how do you obtain fetal tissue by chorionic villi sampling so either in the options chorionic villi sampling will be given or karyotyping will be given right similarly if a question comes that there is a pregnant female with previous history of down syndrome and she has come to you at 15 to 16 weeks what is the next step next step mein ya to options mein karyotyping diya hoga and 15 to 16 weeks mein karyotyping ke liye we need fetal tissue by amniocentesis to amniocentesis diya hoga all of you 
you will this video is going to stay here so don't request me to show the previous slide because this video is going to remain here you can always copy later on right now important points on chorionic villi sampling and amniocentesis chorionic villi sampling can be done between 10 to 13 weeks best time is 11 to 13 weeks it should never be done at less than 10 weeks amniocentesis can be done between 15 to 20 weeks best time is 16 to 18 weeks it should not be done at less than 15 weeks please remember over here about antenatal visits minimum number of antenatal visits which are advised by government of india are 4 minimum which are advised by who are 8 ideal number of antenatal visits are 12 to 15 jisme up till 28 weeks one visit in 4 weeks between 28 to 36 weeks one visit in 2 weeks and beyond 36 weeks one visit every week clear to all of you okay so dr s s hussain is asking ki if you do chorionic villi sampling before 10 weeks what is going to happen so remember two very important questions if they ask you what is the most common fetal complication of chorionic villi sampling the most common fetal complication of chorionic villi sampling is fetal loss but if they ask you what is the most common fetal complication if chorionic villi sampling is done at less than 10 weeks then the answer is oro mandibular defect or limb defect oro mandibular defect or limb defect clear to all of you yes so i am going to take your class only up till here i have taught you fetal anemia pih diabetes and antenatal visits ke bare mein everything all these are very very important topics please grow through them and if you have uh, any uh, questions related to it you can dm me on my instagram handle or i will also come live on instagram to solve your doubts so keep collecting your doubts and you can ask me when i come live on instagram for the for your doubt session i hope uh, this these kinds of sessions are beneficial to you keep studying and uh, keep revising at this point of time i don't want any of you to do anything new just keep revising whatever you have done and keep this these are the important points which i have told you you cannot miss out on these points all the best keep studying take care next class again i will update it on instagram i will definitely update it on instagram i think i have given some schedule so we can follow the schedule or if by chance i am not following the schedule i am going to update you okay take care bye bye